All right, so before we get started with plating our blood auger, what I want to really talk about first is going through uh, how to interpret the different blood auger results. So you have different forms of hemolysis. So this is basically the lysine or breakdown of red blood cells. So these different bacteria have a different ability uh, to, to lyse these cells. And we see that based on the reactions on our blood auger plates. So the most um, virulent, I guess, the, the worst reaction that we can get, so this is a beta plate. I'm keeping these closed um, just for safety reasons, so I do apologize for any of the glare that might occur. But as you can see, here we have unlysed blood auger, which is still in red. However, in this yellow area here, it's clear. So this means that the bacteria that we plated lysed the, would lyse the red blood cells in blood auger, and we have positive growth. So it's a little hard to see, but if you look through, you can see some of the colonies on the plate itself. Next, we have alpha homolysis. So this will have normally some growth, however, it doesn't have the same efficiency of red, red blood cell lysing as we do with beta hemolysis or microbes that cause beta hemolysis. So you'll see here that we have our unaffected blood auger up here and then down here it's slightly discolored. Next we have gamma hemolysis. So gamma hemolysis here um, in this plate can't quite see it. We do have positive growth, but in gamma hemolysis, these cell, these red blood cells are not getting lysed. So it's going to be similar in appearance to before you even plate. So you have a plate that, and mind you, this is also an old plate my, to kind of describe some of the discoloration, but you have unplate, uh, fresh sterile plate and then gamma hemolysis, you see that there's not much change. So now we're going to play our unknown microbes. So this is an unknown staphylococcus, so be careful with it. Again, we, for these labs, we won't or shouldn't be using anything that's necessarily pathogenic, um, but still be very careful in what you're doing. So I'm gonna take this out and then for my blood auger plate, all I'm going to do here is just streak across the plate like so. You can also do a line down the middle as well. You just don't want to take your, um, you don't want to take your swab and try to make a lawn across the plate. So you want to make sure that when you're plating your lawn, it's going to be spread out. All right, so what we're looking at are two different blood auger plates. So in one of them, we have beta hemolysis. In one of them, we have alpha hemolysis. And then one, we have beta hemolysis. So on each of these plates, we've also put down some antibiotics, which you can kind of tell on this particular plate here and here. And what we see are these small rings. So you see some antibiotic resistance from this disc. However, you see resistance here. So you have antibiotic resistance, here you have antibiotic sensitivity. So this is more obvious when we're looking at our beta hemolysis because we can actually see through the plate. So here we'll have our antibiotic sensitivity and this is shown by the existence of unhemolysized blood auger and then we have antibiotic resistant bacteria which is shown by this P-disc, penicillin, 
And we see that there is growth throughout where the penicillin is, uh, and there's no ring of or zone of inhibition. So this means that this particular bacteria is antibiotic resistant to this particular antibiotic. 